Augie's Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Carl Middlekalf, and uh, he asked me to take a look at a picture uh, that um, he has of his tower. Now, just to give you an idea what kind of tower we're looking at, this is just a little segment of a generic tower that I found on it that has the same zigzag pattern on it that uh, Carl's uh, tower has. And uh, so let's take a look at the picture he sent me. Here is the tower, okay? Here's that side little thing, you know, where all the bracing is. And here's what happened. This piece right here, there was water got in here, and this section froze. Not all of it, but this section froze. Now, why would this section freeze and this section not freeze? If this head was full of water, the whole thing was full of water, you see this thing right here that goes this length for the welding? Okay, this would conduct heat away from this area in on a very cold day. And so this section right here could freeze while the rest of it doesn't. Now I will grant you this is in Biloxi, Mississippi. I spent eight months in Biloxi, Mississippi, including over the winter. And uh, I'll tell you, it can get chilly there. Uh, it has snowed there. Uh, so it is possible for something like this to happen. What happened was the water froze in there, causing this to bulge out, which caused this crack right here. Now he is rightly worried about that crack because that crack is a major loss of strength in this section of the tower. Okay, this weld right here is, is uh, sticking it up a little bit, but we've got some problems. So I called a friend of mine, um, Stan, who's KE6UOV. Now, he actually lives less than a mile from me, but uh, he's a retired welder, and uh, he, has, uh, he is now teaching welding uh, four classes a week. Uh, welding's a good uh, skill set to get into because it's very much in demand. Anyway, Stan uh, agrees that it's a freeze crack. He says is it is weldable, okay, in other words, you can fix it with some welding. But he is, he does not believe, based on these little bumps here, this is splattered weld material on there. He does not believe this tower is truly aluminum. So he asks Carl to please take a magnet that he confirms is a magnet out to the tower and test it. If the magnet sticks, it's steel. Uh, which would be far more common for uh, tower material, okay? And uh, because of the strength you need from the steel. Now, aluminum can be as strong as steel, but it has to be thicker to do that. This obviously isn't very thick right here, okay? So if this is steel, the first thing you need to do is find the end of the crack and look at it really carefully and drill little one eighth inch holes that include the end of the crack. So if the crack comes along like this and ends there, drill a one eighth inch hole right there. That will keep the crack from propagating. Do that on each end of the crack. Okay. Now, you can then, since this material got pushed out, you can kind of gently tap it back into there so that that'll bring this kind of back together. And then if it's aluminum, you would TIG weld it. Now, TIG welding is what we used to call heliarching. You use a noble gas, uh, meaning a non-reacting gas like helium uh, or neon or something like that. Uh, one of the ones that's in the very right-hand column of the uh, periodic table. Uh, argon is also uh, common for that sort of thing. 
The problem with welding aluminum in air is that it will combine with the oxygen in the air to form aluminum oxide, um, which is wonderful stuff, but it's aluminum ore. It's not real aluminum, so you wouldn't be able to weld that without doing the TIG welding. Now, the other thing that you need to do is to find out what the outer diameter of that pipe is. So you've got the inner diameter, the outer diameter. Okay, find a piece of pipe that's the inner diameter is equal to the outer diameter. Okay, and then you're going to put this over this, okay, over this, and weld it to this pipe to give it some strengthening. So he had a name for those things, a doubler. He called it a doubler. So you're going to tamp it down, TIG weld it, put a piece over the doubler that's made of the same material, and heliarch it or TIG weld it to the uh, pole. Because this is a major point of weakness for that tower. Could this tower come down in the next strong wind? You bet it could. Even though this right here, this little weld, tends to strengthen it a bit, you've got a weakness right here. That this, if you've got a big strong wind, this could collapse on you and you've got a problem. Okay, so um, to be on the safe side, you want to um, do, uh, if this is steel, do MIG welding or just plain arc welding. You can weld steel without uh, protecting it from the oxygen. Now, the problem with TIG welding, if your weld is right here, if your weld is, is here and you're trying to weld on it, the slightest breeze is going to blow your argon gas out of the way. So what you need to do is get yourself covered up. Either put cardboard around it or something, or just go up the pole, get a um, shower curtain or something, and put it all the way around the pole. Okay, clamp it on there so that you can climb up underneath there and do the weld. Now, beware the gases and all of that sort of thing like that. Follow appropriate safety procedures for doing this. But you will get air up and through here. It's just up in here. It can get a little murky. So you, that's the only way that you're going to keep the um, TIG gas from affecting that. So step one, confirm that it's aluminum by putting a magnet on it. If the magnet sticks, it's steel. Um, and uh, uh, um, Stan's considered opinion is this is probably steel. Okay, and the second, you'll kind of push this in because you're going to put a plate over it. So you're going to have to push all this in, weld what you can, put the little eighth inch holes there, and then put a cover or doubler over that and weld that into place too, okay? To give you a strong tower that won't come over in the wind. Now, uh, Carl wonders if he could use epoxy or something like that. This is not a cosmetic hole. This is a major structural hole and it needs to be uh, fixed or you're going to have a tower down in the next strong wind, and we don't want that. Uh, you should also fix up your tower legs so that they can uh, drain any water that's in them. Make sure there are no open spots like uh, at the uh, top of the tower, like this, where water can get in. Get those sealed up. That's where your epoxy can be used. Uh, or some kind of rubber or just latex or something like that to keep the water out of there. Water when freezing, and uh, it freezes at uh, zero centigrade, 32 degrees 
Fahrenheit, um, the water has to sit there for a while before it will freeze. And when it freezes, it expands by 2%. And believe me, there's almost nothing solid that can withstand the pressure of that water freezing. Now, if it cannot expand, it will become super cooled. And then when it can expand, it will expand very suddenly and can create uh, some serious problems. There have been issues where um, water in industrial equipment is very still and it gets down to the point where it super cools down below the temperature of freezing. And the slightest little energy input, a bump, something falling into the water, something like that, and bam, you've got a flash freeze and it will break everything in sight. So uh, water is your enemy uh, in the towers, even in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, by the way, I have been to Biloxi, Mississippi. That's where I went through my Air Force tech training back in uh, 1976 and early 1977. I remember the area fondly. I have a feeling that it's changed quite a bit uh, since that particular time frame. So there you have it. Um, if you or anybody viewing would like to throw a little bit into the bucket for the channel, uh, you can go to decastlercom slash uh, support. Um, please subscribe and click like. All those wonderful things YouTube wants you to do. Feed the algorithm. And until we next meet, 73.